So we are going to talk about GI bleeding. Favorite of ICU and GI, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Now. New studies come and go, OK? And things keep changing regarding oh, what time we need to do what. But basically over the course of this for the past 10 years, I've been seeing this. The biggest thing that stayed stable is resuscitation. Everything else like when to scope, what to do, etc. comes and goes, keeps changing. But resuscitation seems to be the key thing. So, so when I look at GI bleeding, uh, I usually th this is actually thing prepared by me. Like I see if this is GI bleeding, is it chronic or acute? OK, and if it's chronic, is it most most of the time it's occult, like most of the time you don't see the actual blood. You just think that it's bleeding because you have iron deficiency anemia. And most of the time these patients are hemodynamically stable. Now acute uh, usually means there will be over GI bleeding. Uh, they, when they have over GI bleeding, they are either unstable or stable. And over GI bleeding can be from upper GI, small bowel or lower GI. And uh, lower GI, upper GI is usually peptic ulcer disease or variceal. This is how I differentiate when I evaluate bleeding. Um, so the, the studies are a little old, but I think still stay uh, truthful. The upper GI bleed majority of the like 90 percent. I tell the patients when they come for bleeding evaluation, 90 percent of the time the bleeding is with source of bleeding is visible for with a regular GI EGD scope and regular colonoscope. Uh, five to 10 percent of the time there is a chance that they can have small bowel bleeding. Uh, so occult GI bleeding uh, usually manifested by iron deficiency anemia, but uh, you know never say never people see their doctor and nobody comes in like a virgin patient to you. There's already interventions done. Some people try to give them iron, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you may or may not see the classical iron panel and uh, majority of them. They don't have any overt hematochesia or melana. FOBT again, it's not that sensitive. It can be negative even in so when somebody has iron deficiency in him and there is no other overt bleeding, uh, you still rule out GI bleeding even if the FOBT is negative. OK, and uh, usually we prefer these people get outpatient colonoscopy, outpatient workup, EGD colon plus or minus capsule endoscopy depending upon how severe their anemia is. Uh, occult is different from obscure. Obscure is where you can see bleeding happening, but in spite of your uh, best investigations, you are not able to see where the blood is coming from. So that's occult versus obscure. Now, how do you determine stable versus unstable? Um, so rock, there are some scores that uh, usually we uh, it is recommended to use. Rockall score, not that famous because you use that uh, part of the score is what lesion they find on endoscopy, so you can't use it before endoscopy. AIM, AIM 65, uh, more uh, specific. Uh, Blatchford is the one that many people recommend. Uh, if the Blatchford is 0 to 1, you can discharge the patient for an outpatient follow up. Uh, but more above 1, like many people get above 1. So risk factors, obviously, they have hypotension and the more <coughs> advanced age, coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, tachycardia, other coma, all these uh, in, increase the mortality. Uh, active bleeding after one hour of present active bleeding, which is ongoing hematemesis, ongoing coffee chronemesis, ongoing hematochesia, ongoing melanic diarrhea. These, if they have these things, uh, we usually recommend an ICU admission because sometimes if they have active bleeding, the CBC may not be actual representative of uh, you know the, your your actual status uh, because it takes at least two to three hours for the you know interstitial fluid to come in stabilize the hemoglobin etc and during this time usually uh, you know you tend to be a little bit more aggressive you don't follow that seven gram rule or nine gram rule for transfusion so always resuscitate resuscitate uh, too large bore IV cannula, 
I don't know if you guys talked about this or not because you know the length of the candela determines the resistance to the fluid so smaller candelas are more easier to used if you're yeah so 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 if, uh, so usually if there is active bleeding try to shoot for a nine gram because you know your hemoglobin may not be representative of actual status and uh, INR it's OK to for 1.5 to 2.5 platelets can be 50. Uh, most recent guidelines say that even if the platelets are less than 50,000 and uh, even if the INR is more than 2.5 for cirrhosis patients, it's OK to ban them. So we still ban those people even if that. So if somebody is real cirrhotic bleeding, we usually don't wait for their INR to completely normalize. We just go ahead and do the scope. So. So upper GI bleeding uh, presents with coffee grown nemesis, can present with hematemesis, melanoma, or even hematochesia. So if, if your differential is upper GI bleeding for hematochesia, uh, you should uh, kind of expect the patient should be unstable because the bleeding is so fast. Uh, hematochesia with clots, which essentially means that the bleeding is a little bit slow and has time to clot, usually it's lower GI. All, obviously, uh, you know, uh, onset duration, progression, like happening for five years versus happening from five hours is different. And uh, previous history of peptic ulcer disease, cirrhosis. Uh, uh, always look for many people who come here, they don't have a diagnosis of cirrhosis, but they've been drinking beer since they're 12. So, and they don't say that that's alcohol. So it's look for any signs of liver cell failure, obvious abnormal LFTs or something like that. Um, rectal exam sometimes. Uh, rectal exam I think is beneficial because if the patient says melanoma and you do a rectal exam and you don't see blood uh, or you don't find poop on your glove, you know, we still go ahead and do the EGD. But if you do a rectal exam and you know, you take out your finger and blood flows out, that's more emergency than waiting for the weekend to finish or something like that. So. I would say that helps in terms of determining how soon we can scope. No melana, so you're supposed you can have melana with just 50 ml blood loss, and the melana can, depending upon your gut motility, can last for up to four days. So if the patient says that he had melana this morning, and you go back and you see green stool or dark green stool, most likely he didn't have melana. So uh, again, may not be that much important in your situation because I see you, you know, you are supposed to see things flowing out. So it may not be that appropriate for you for ICU level, but outpatient stuff. And obviously if they're not vomiting and if they're not having any bowel movements, usually there is no significant uh, significant GI. So basically I'm saying no active significant GI bleeding. So if somebody has occult GI bleed, they can still be constipated. So if they're if they bleeding like really slowly, they can still be constipated for whatever reason they are constipated. So you can still be constipated with bleeding, especially if it's occult bleed or if it's a very, very slow bleed. Most of the time you can't see it with naked eye. But uh, if you are thinking about clinically significant GI bleeding where patient is hemodynamically compromised because of GI bleeding, then you should see some blood coming out, okay? If you don't see blood coming out, obviously look for other sources. Um, you can't hide blood in the brain. You know, you can, you'll get, uh, you'll be unconscious. You can hide blood in the thorax because you, you pull out two, three liters of fluid from the lungs and patient may even not have breathing trouble. You know, you can have, you can have up to 10 units in your lungs. You can have up to 10 units in your stomach. You can have up to 10 units in your thighs. So some things that, you know, when you when you have a patient who comes for sepsis and septic shock and has underlying uh, or if he's going into uh, TTP or HUS or something like those things uh, consider that other diagnosis. So NG tube, I mean old style gastroenterologists still say we need an NG lavage. NG lavage is very erratic. I don't like it at all because, you know, uh, NG lavage is considered negative only if you see bile. But if you don't see bile, you can't still rule out duodenal ulcer bleeding. So sometimes if the, I may ask for an NG tube to empty out the stomach so that I can look better, mm -hmm. but I won't uh, use NG tube as a guide for what I'm gonna do, okay? 
So erythromycin, again, guidelines say they suggest it. They don't actually strongly recommend it. I don't like this word suggested. They either say do it or don't do it, something like that. So uh, they suggest it. So I usually, um, if the person is vomiting blood and he's in the ICU, I think you should just go ahead and give 250 IV erythromycin. Acts pretty quickly within a couple hours. So, and as far as I know, it doesn't have any significant GI side effects. I don't know if there is any significant cardiac side effects that you know of, of erythromycin per single dose. Apart from the QT, uh, there's not much. To I don't, I don't, unless you are really allergic to erythromycin, I think you should just give it, especially if they come with bloody vomiting and we are trying to do scope this. <clears throat> Reglan again, I would prefer erythromycin than Reglan because uh, studies have shown that erythromycin actually empties the stomach much better. Um, so cold saline, previously they used to do it, don't do it now. Not no longer recommended, recommended against. Um, and the high risk stigmata, especially uh, active variceal bleed, which is controlled or active ulcer, which has been treated, uh, try to hospitalize them for at least three days uh, because there is a high risk of rebleeding. Um, you can start clear liquids after endoscopy as soon as possible. Uh, PPI continuous therapy is no longer a must. You can either consider high continuous therapy or intermittent high dose therapy. They both are same. So 40 BID is fine. So and uh, can be restart. Low risk people can be low risk is Blatchford uh, zero to one, which is essentially a patient who comes in and for something else to the ER and says that, oh, I have melanoma too. And you check and he doesn't have elevated B and his blood count is stable and his hemodynamically stable. Those are the people who are usually Blatchford one, which is sometimes very rare to find. So very cell bleeding again, very high mortality. Uh, I would prepare the family as soon as I see a very cell blade. This is not a good thing. Like one out of five people won't make it out uh, beyond a month. So I'll just even the people who are like super stable, child's a cirrhotic suddenly develops very cell bleed. Everything changes. So very cell bleed definitely ICU. So transfuse to hemoglobin eight. Uh, do not over transfuse. There is a theoretical risk of increased intravascular pressure. If you ask, hey, did they do a case control study or random? No, nobody did it. It's just a general policy. They just grandfather. That recommendation has been grandfathered in into the recommendations. Actuated drip, PPI drip can be intermittent or drip. Uh, antibiotics again. Uh, so basically, when you have very cell bleed, you have disruption of gut integrity. So there is a high risk of bacterial translocation into the acetic fluids, antibiotics must. So ceftriaxone for SBP prophylaxis and uh, uh, ceph uh, ceph cephalexin, uh, not cephalexin, uh, cephazolin for uh, treatment. So those, so I, uh, ceftriaxone for prophylaxis and cephazolin for treatment. And uh, bleeding cannot be controlled or recurs early. So there is always a chance when we put bands, they will fall off or they'll bleed for us, bleed from a different barracks. And uh, usually re-bleeds depending upon your ex available expertise. Uh, you can re-scope for a glue injection or dermabond injection, or if you have tips available pretty easily, then you can send them for tips. BRTO is uh, specifically for gastric viruses because gastric viruses are not easily treatable by endoscopy. We can still put a band around the gastric varix. We can still inject glue. And um, you don't really need to do a full tips for a gastric varix. You can just upload that select gastric viruses. Uh, many, some radiologists are completely against BRTO because if you stop the gas, if you block the gastric varix, all that pressure gets diverted into the esophagus varics and you can start having esophagus varics. So many people say BRTO is like a, it's not a good measure. Many people want to do tips, but if you go to a high volume center or transplant center, they try to do BRTO. Uh, so again, all depends upon what kind of resources you have. You don't want to sit on these people for like three days for getting a BRTO versus the tips because they'll die. So you may want to push towards tips than getting a BRTO. So those things. 
again airway protection variceal bleeding is very bloody so we recommend if the patient has any kind of compromise just intubate them and intubation is important because if you want to do a balloon tamponade you can't do it when the patient is awake you have to intubate them so that's one of the main reasons so biggest thing that you need to know where is your balloon tamponade kit do you know where to find it the Minnesota tube, you mean? Huh? The Minnesota tube? Yeah, the, no, the balloon tamponade, the uh, sinks taken Black tube, Blakemore tube. Do you know where to find it? The hospital, you mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not too. Apparently, usually ER has it or the OR has it. Okay. So I didn't knew I didn't know it until I placed maybe three or four Blakemore tubes. Uh, surprisingly, a couple of them survived. These are mainly I did because. Uh, there was a guy who I banded so many times that there was so much scar tissue and he started bleeding from that scar tissue and I can't grab it with a scope. So he started oozing from a, like a flat scar. So I didn't know where the Blake was. So we were calling. Finally, OR, we came to know that OR has it. So we should have at least one train in the ICU, but usually I don't know why they don't keep it. As far as I know, OR has it here, or ER definitely has it. Similar to Minnesota tube? Yes, Minnesota tube. There is a difference between a Blake Brown and Minnesota tube. I'm not sure which one they have here. I have never used a Minnesota tube. Minnesota is the one you can do it from. Speak us to the. That's the one, Black Moon. Blakemore is the one which has gastric as well as two lumens. It's after as balloons. So make sure the patient gets intubated. It's just like passing an NG tube. Put the tube. You're supposed to have uh, you're supposed to have C arm to make sure that the tube is in the right. You don't want to insufflate a gastric balloon in the esophagus. Yeah. So make sure uh, uh, you, you. It's like an NG tube. Pass it. Uh, insufflate with 200 ml pull it up and hang it to a, like a one liter saline bag. Right. So when would you use it? Uh, first uh, first preference is always EGD. Uh, Blakemore is never supposed to be a, a treatment measure. It's a stop gap measure until patient goes for tips. OK, so it's uh, usually when it's two o'clock in the morning, your gastroenterologist is at home. And you have an active there until we you can't even wait 30 minutes an hour for mm -hmm. them to come to your school but the biggest thing uh, i think is after it definitely works after it definitely works after it reduces the blood pressure so fast so um what yeah you no after it after, after, after it definitely works yeah, i would say when we didn't have gi i tried to put it once but here they don't give you any they just send you the tube uh -huh. without any equipment mm -hmm. so you don't have a a pressure gauge. I mean, you can. I looked videos later, and you can gather stuff from yeah. the IC. To it's put it. it's pretty. It's pretty like barbaric. Like it's just yeah. you're using a balloon to push against the varics to stop bleeding. What so. you can do is just uh, shove it all the way down, inflate only the gastric bubble, and then pull up. pull it up. And when it tugs, get an X-ray before you inflate it. Do you suggest inflating the esophageal yeah, balloon? Yeah, both. Yeah. First, how, in, how much? A pressure yeah. 20 25 i have never seen pressure just uh, the recommendation gastric balloon uh, 200 cc oh, okay. and uh, es esophagus also like 200 yeah, because cc. one time i saw them in a sort of they, they were measuring pressure yeah this is what but the one when because we don't do it nurses yeah. don't know how to do it so when i asked for it they just sent me the tube usually there are some connection tubing with a pressure machine with a machine device to measure pressures in residency, this is how okay, we, so we, we, we use it for it to put it. But yeah. I would say if you have GI, I've never had to use it except in residency and fellowship. Yeah. GI was available. They had, a, you know, if you have a fellowship, you call the fellow, the fellow is going to be here soon. Mm -hmm. By the time you resuscitate, incubate, put mm -hmm. lines, a lot of times GI is there because you can't put a in the third world, they put in awake patients, I was told. I don't know how they do that. Yeah, I don't think I would not suggest it. Never. But, but someone told me, yeah, we used to put in awake patients. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it has to be incubated. Yeah. Yeah. We had a patient recently who had, he had uh, a surgical varices, mm -hmm. but he had no ascites. Like we also have earlier, he had no ascites. Mm -hmm. So we recommend to stop set for axon because he has no ascites. Technically, uh, yeah. Then, uh, if you ask me on paper, yes. Yeah. But uh, you know, everybody has at least 50 cc fluid. Okay. So, so even if it's just small, I would, I would, yeah, even if it's small so, amount. Yeah, even <coughs> for yeah. how long would you continue with the prophylaxis? Uh, five days. Doesn't have to be. Uh,
uh, after three days they, we have changed to Cipro so that they can get discharged. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so technically on paper, if you look look at it theoretically, theory wise, uh, your portal, you're supposed to have pressure in the balloon, which is supposed to be more than your portal pressure, right? So that you can actually compress the vein. So majority of the people, uh, uh, majority of the people will have portal pressure of at least 25. So 25 is a good thing, but uh, you will know as soon as you black the varix patient will stop vomiting and all that. So, OK. So anything helps like uh, even even if you are a little bit off with the pressure, it will definitely stop the bleeding or at least slow down the bleeding. It will definitely help. And major, most of the time what happens is you have a varix which has high pressure and the patient bleeds like three or four units and the pressure drops and the varix automatically stops. That's why when we go in for people who actually have variceal bleeding, many times we don't actually see a splurting whether we actually see a platelet plug already. So. The bleeding itself decreases the pressure and stops the bleeding for a while until the pressure builds up again. So now this forest classification, uh, I don't think you need to know detail about it. The only thing is if there is active bleeding vessel, there is a high likelihood that they will bleed again. So that's why majority of the time we need uh, we need active intervention. So usually you need to put a clip or you need to treat it with cautery or something. So so we can't just leave it like that. Now, adherent clot, there has been plus or minus. Some people say leave it, some people say treat it. Uh, uh, guidelines initially said definitely remove it and treat it, but now guidelines are saying, depending upon your comfort, if you're comfortable, take it out and treat it, or else you can even leave it. So, so these are some pictures. Uh, the lower. This one is a visible vessel which is being treated. Um, those are variceal bands. How do you treat uh, gastric variceal? Uh, if you if if they are sufficiently closer to the esophagus, if they are more like a gastroesophageal versus gastric, uh, you can, we we still put bands on them. Uh, isolated gastric. Uh, if we can grab the varix, we'll put, I'll put a band on them. Okay. Isolated gastric varices. Uh, I used to inject a uh, glue, just a temporary measure. It's never permanent okay. uh, or ethanolamine, uh, which is available too. Uh, but uh, uh, Franda started Ooh. Franda started doing the US guided dermabond injection, which is uh, uh, which is like a very fancy ethanolamine. It's supposed to uh, ethanolamine is supposed to irritate and create a clot. Dermabond is supposed to be more safe way to create a clot. Uh, you still run risk of uh, embolism with both. Uh, however, with Dermabond, we are using coils along with Dermabond, so the Dermabond doesn't float into the blood, sort of stays there. So, uh, what about so, so tips? Could we have to tips a couple of patients? Mm -hmm. uh, so usually, we, if it's a uh, 80, 80 to 90 percent of the time, we send them for tips. The okay. gastric varix treatment is always like, like temporary, just stabilizing the patient. Uh, ultimately, like uh, we try to send them to tips. Uh, so clot and you treat a vessel until it disappears and you see this uh, white stuff. You don't you should no longer see see the vessel like completely destroy it. So small bowel bleeding again, this is a very, very headache uh, issue. Uh, it's very thankfully it's not that common. Small bowel bleeding is not that common and the majority of the time you don't have to do anything for it. Um, so how do you diagnose small bowel bleeding? Uh, if the bleeding is fast enough, uh, approximately uh, 0.5 uh, cc per minute, uh, you can find it on CT angiography. So according to the ACG guidelines, first thing you need to do if there is active bleeding and if you're suspecting small blood bleeding, it's CT angiography because it's fast to get. Uh, it's uh, easy to obtain when compared to a tagged scan or something. So um, there are some instances where they indicate a direct IR angiogram, but nobody is going to agree for that. They'll say definitely you need to get a CT. Uh, and capsule endoscopy. Um, uh, depending upon availability of services, we always uh, and depending upon how severe the anemia is, we do a EGD colon and at the same time if if I think 
it gets necessary we just do the capsule at the same time uh, the problem with doing capsule endoscopy is more uh, technicality wise because uh, you know capsule should move in the intestine okay and if you have a patient who is intubated and is lying down uh, uh, we drop a capsule in the duodenum it's going to sit in the jejunum for like eight ten hours how so, often how soon can we get the images so i'm thinking from an icu perspective a lot of times we have a bleeder you guys do an upper and lower and there's nothing then we bleed again uh ct angio or tag scan would be a faster right? yeah, ct and CT angio is much faster. CT angio is like your regular CT scan. You should get it in 10 minutes. Is CAT scan more sensitive? It's more sensitive, definitely. 0.2 to 0.5, they say. Okay. But again, it requires a special IR, uh, not IR, like the, the really, tech, really, 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 nuclear, 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 nuclear yeah, medicine tech. tech yeah, yeah. Whereas CT scan, there's a tech all the time. Yeah, so, so. So that's why we see the point is like they take some blood, they tag it, then they, they inject it back. Yeah, yeah, they see if there is a leak. We've had positive yeah, results yeah, where you do it and positive, they take yeah. the patient and embolize. The problem mm -hmm. is the angio is much less, uh, much less sensitive, so they go in. With the CT angio, they know where the bleed is. With TAG scan, they might they, they, it's, it. they They have a vague idea. Can, they can be, they can determine if it's small bowel Then they versus. go and they found no bleeding. So again, that's another issue. Like many times, if you have tag scan, it be, it will be positive, but if you go in and uh, well, inject, you, find you won't find anything then because it's so. Bleeding and yeah, like and then when you're hypersensitive, the bleeding stops. So I went once with a case to IR. They actually pushed the nephron to increase the blood pressure. So, so there is a the patient starts bleeding so that they can stop. And the, sometimes what happens that tag or the CT scan takes some time, and most bleeding, honestly, with appropriate resuscitation. With stop on its own. Yeah. So by the time the tag and then you call, because IR is not going to come from home, let's say if they're at home. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come at home until you have a positive CTA mm -hmm. or a tag. A no, the other thing is uh, now we have. Uh, by the time they come, sometimes it stops. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. guys fix a uh, small bowel bleed endoscopically? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have single balloons, so we can reach up to proximal ileum. But the problem is uh, majority of the time small bowel bleed is uh, due to AVMs. And we burn an AVM, you can't say how soon the AVM is going to come back or not. Okay. So it's not, it's never a permanent fix. So, uh, so there is a, there is other things that uh, we, I don't, it depends upon how aggressive the IR guys wants to be. They can actually give a, a agitated angiogram. They actually heparinize the patient while injecting the contrast to actually displace any clot or anything like that. Uh, so, so. Yeah, balloon endoscopy again. Uh, it's a it's a stopgap measure. People, uh, you you burn all the AVMs you can, so patient instead of coming back in a month will come back in like three months. With so, so ultimately they will come back for sure. And there is there is a guy who uh, comes back every couple of weeks actually for uh, uh, balloon uh, endoscopy. Unfortunately, he just got Plavix for a stent, so they can't stop Plavix. Sure. So we got to keep giving him blood until for another six months or so. So he'll be in the hospital for like two months out of that six months if he's lucky. Yeah. So intraoperative endoscopy is something that you can do like the surgeon can create a laparoscopic incision and he can thread the bowel over the scope and we can examine the entire bowel actually with that. Again, that, uh, you know, sometimes if you're trying to look for a lesion or if you're trying to fix some, if you're worried about uh, thickening, that you're worried that it can be cancer, you may need an intraoperative endoscopy. Now, causes, you can have so many reasons, but still AVMs are the most common in people who you see. Uh, IBD is the second common and uh, all these are very rare. I saw one blue rubber blood nevus syndrome, but that was in the colon. I have seen uh, one diurnal, port diurnal entropathy, so you can bleed from that. Uh, so good news is that majority of the time you will see bleeding with regular EGD scope and colonoscope. All these are very rare. Uh, Michael Stavetklem again, it's suggested if you do EGD colon capsule and everything is negative and if the patient is less than 40, uh, we get a Michael scan. 
or not not just that if the iron therapy is not treating them anemia if he's not responding to iron therapy only then we'll get michael scan so lower gi bleeding uh, can be red blood sometimes it can be melina if the bleeding is from cecum or right colon or even ti uh, obviously as i said if the bleeding is too fast rule out upper gi bleeding uh, colonoscopy is a preferred indication a preferred investigation definitely again stabilizing the patient rapid purge uh, and uh, colonoscopy we'll try to do it within 24 hours which is recommended uh, if this is a bleeding diverticulum we can place a clip on it and if there is an avm we can burn it uh, patients who are not stabilized or not you know there, there is not enough time to prep the patient then obviously have to go for a ct angiogram if they're bleeding that fast ct angiogram is going to be positive and IR should be able to find it. Now, the other etiologies of uh, G lower GI bleeding, uh, direct clip bleed we can fix with a scope, but again, it's very hard uh, to find the actual culprit direct clum. Ischemic colitis, there's nothing much we can do. We gotta wait for the bleeding to stop. Angiectasia, we can treat. Hemorrhoids, we can treat. Neoplasia is one of the things that we can't do anything. Have to get surgery, take it out. Um, we have the hemospray powder, but honestly, it doesn't work on malignancy. It works on a big ulcer. They have seen hemospray powder actually stops actively bleeding blood vessel. But the only reason we the, they, uh, they advise against using hemospray is you are spending like $2,000 on a spray versus like $15, $20 on an on a injection needle and a uh, bicap. So that's the only thing. But Hemospray has actually stopped actively bleeding blood vessels. So post polypectomy bleeding, yeah, definitely we can treat it with a scope. IBD bleeding. I think there is a guy in the ICU now with really bad ulcerative colitis or something, right? A lady. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, IBD bleeding can't treat with a scope. Have to give them high dose steroid. I mean, confirm that it's IBD bleeding. And after that, high dose steroids, uh, so wait for three days for high dose steroids. If the three days doesn't stop it, uh, try to get approval for inpatient Remicade, which is very hard to get. So yeah, or uh, cyclosporin. So infectious colitis, NSAID enteropathy, radiation proctopathy we can treat, stercoral ulcer we can't treat, rectal viruses. These are very, very rare. We I put a band on rectal varics once, but uh, it didn't stay. Uh, the patient actually went for tips. So if it's rectal varics, uh, I would uh, uh, definitely uh, prepare IR for tips actually, if it's an actual bleeding, because IR helps with two things. IR helps with number one, confirming portal hypertension. If there is no portal hypertension, that's probably hemorrhoid bleeding, not rectal varics. If it's a hemorrhoid bleeding, bleeding it will stop. It will never cause death. So, so I would definitely prepare, definitely send them to IR. Dulafa lesion again, a very rare, but still can be fixed. So lower GI bleeding, is occult, send them for colonoscopy. And if colonoscopy is negative, we'll do EGD. Melena obviously is always start with the EGD, and if EGD is negative, need to get colonoscopy to rule out right side cause. Uh, scant intermittent hematochesia, you can do a flexible sigmoidoscopy, but uh, nowadays, uh, if you don't see anything on flexible sigmoidoscopy, you should proceed with colonoscopy. So, um, and severe hematochesia. So this is where you guys come in. Severe hematochesia, obviously resuscitation, do the basics. Consider NG lavage. Again, this is uh, depending upon the resources that are available to you. If it's a severe hematochesia, I would just come and do a EGT. Yeah, most of the time. Or if 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 he is any relatively even a bit stable, and if you can at least give him like a two liter prep, like if he's intubated, put an NG tube, give a prep. We'll try to do colonoscopy EGT as soon as possible. Yeah. And uh, obviously, if the colonoscopy and EGT both are negative. And if there is persistent bleeding, then get angiography. Yeah. And the surgery's role in bleeding has been going down more and more. 
but there is still a role for surgery especially uh, malignancy related bleeding you have to cut out the malignancy um, uh, recurrent diverticular bleeding causing hemodynamic compromise you have to cut out the diverticulosis uh, severe ischemic colitis uh, and uh, you can't wait for ischemia results in one two months and you can't wait have to cut out the ischemic part uh, bad ulcerative colitis severe um, severe uh, uh, flare which is not responding to three days of steroids and three days of remicade have to go for surgery so okay so surgery is still surgery still has a place it's it's going down and down but it's still there is a place and uh, you you are more likely to see surgery for bleeding than other people so there's, there's a more likelihood that the patient who's bleeding is in the icu who needs surgery okay okay so if there is a, a suspected small bowel bleeding uh, uh, repeat endoscopy and if it's negative uh, you can get a CT or MRE to see if there is any small bowel disease, malignancy or Crohn's or anything. Uh, or you can get a capsule endoscopy. And uh, depending upon what you find, you can get a Meckel scan or surgery or intraoperative endoscopy, or you can get a deep endoscopy or intraoperative. So uh, basically, I don't think you will see this primarily in uh, ICU wise. Uh, this is the, these all happen in outpatient majority of the time. Uh, Re-bleeding or failed therapy. So peptic ulcer disease, if there is a repeat bleeding from peptic ulcer disease, unless otherwise mentioned on endoscopy that the ulcer is too big or the vessel is too large, like if the vessel is more than uh, the probe, the probe that is supposed to close the blood vessel is 3, three mm wide. If the vessel is wider than 3 mm, we can't burn the vessel. We can still put a clip on it uh, and uh, the OVSCO clip, which is an over the scope clip, has uh, remarkably changed this. Like now we can treat even bigger vessels if, with the OVSCO clip. We can actually clot bigger vessels. So uh, best thing to do is endoscopic therapy with the minimal complication. So if, we, if EGD fails, then uh, interventional radiology or surgery. Uh, varicell ligation, if there is repeat bleeding, um, either repeat EGD or tips with the Blakemore bridge. Um, they say you can put Blakemore tube until 72 hours. That's a little bit pushing it. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, esophageal necrosis is real. It can happen. Yeah, so I don't think we should wait until 20, 72, but recommendations say you can. Um, and again, consider tips, preemptive tips like if Varices, uh, you band the varix, especially for gastric varices. Even if you stop bleeding, always I'll prepare them for tips. Um, Rebleeding after colonoscopy, repeat colonoscopy, award barium studies. Previously, they used to do small bowel follow through for nowadays. It's 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 completely. You should not do barium study for bleeding evaluation. Period. So, uh, CT enterography. If it's a younger patient, try to get a Meckel scan. Hades syndrome, you know this, right? This uh, aortic stenosis related uh, uh, AVMs in the small bubble. Uh, and uh, uh, they actually respond very well. I had one patient in my fellowship who actually went for a, uh, uh, a replacement, valve replacement, and he actually responded. I mean, he still had some bleeding, but he used to come every month, decreased to like, I think he came one time after that. That's it. Elvaz have the same similar. Yeah, thing. yeah. Patients with Elvaz, one of the chronic. They they bleed like they like hell. They yeah. keep bleeding because of similar. So the von Willebrand factor gets sheared or mm -hmm. gets destroyed or whatever yeah. across a tight aortic valve. Same thing when it goes through a mechanical heart. These people are notorious for coming in with GIB, AVMs, and I don't know how they they keep. Them yeah, them, yeah. it's it's, it's not uncommon, especially people who have uh, places where they have a heart transplant. That's a, one of the most common concerns for GI bleeding. Yeah. Mm. Uh, obviously, you know, this thing will always be debated. Uh, and uh, I mean, I have uh, an attending who did. Uh, uh, so the, the st studies on the diverticular bleed actually came from uh, the, just this one investigator who did the study and uh, 
think he's from the Boston area and I asked that attending, hey, you know, the studies are coming from, you know, Boston area. So you did uh, your liver fellowship in Harvard, like how often you guys do scope within six hours for a diabetic culprit? He said very rarely. If you are in a study, they try to do it. Otherwise, it's always prep the patient will come scope in the morning. So, but uh, you know, when you are in the ICU, when the patient is when the patient is intubated, try to put in the NG, get a good clean out, and it will be very easy to do the scope. So, overall, baseline is try to get in scoped within 24 hours for sure. But I don't think ICU we wait that long. We 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 come pretty early to that. So, and any unstable person, um, try to do a EGD rule out upper GI bleed. And if you can't wait until get prepped, go for IR angiogram. Okay. Um, after GI bleed, uh, you can restart antiplatelet anticoagulation therapy immediately. If you see low risk lesion, which is a clean base ulcer or ulcer with pigmented spot. Uh, if uh, if the patient needs anticoagulation antiplatelet therapy and he suffered a bleed from an ulcer and if you can't find a reason for ulcer like the patient is not taking NSAIDs, patient doesn't have H. pylori, those are people who may need PPI indefinitely as long as they are on antiplatelet therapy or anti. Uh, now aspirin secondary prophylaxis can be restarted in three days and DAPT anti can be restarted in seven days after now you have to see that's a definitive treatment. So if you see a bleeding blood vessel, you have obliterated the blood vessel completely and it's completely gone. It should not be like, hey, I saw a clot and I don't know why there is clot. Oh, you can, re you, we will never say that. So once I am sure that the reason for bleeding is stopped, you can restart the anticoagulation. Now you, the patient can bleed again. That's, it will, it will happen, uh, you know, but majority of the people won't. So again, GI bleeding. So EGD colon, if it's negative and if it's brisk bleeding, which is where come in, where you guys come in, CT angiography preferred, tagged scan maybe, and if it's positive, go for IR angiogram. Okay, and if it's negative, it's probably slow bleeding from AVS, get a capsule endoscopy. Okay, and if the capsule is negative, you can continue to monitor iron blood transfusion or you can get a CT MR enterography to rule out small bowel disease, malignancy, or you can get a Meckel scan. If it's capsule endoscopy is positive, you can still continue to monitor, or you do deep endoscopy, or you can even do provocative angiography. I have a nice the patient. Okay. Yep.